All right, hello, welcome to the weather update. It's October 24, 2020, and it was kind of a another cloudy gray day. We had some breaks of sun uh, just before in the late e afternoon and the early evening, and some breaks of clear sky breaking out tonight uh, as well. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a look at what's going on right now across our area. Uh, it's definitely gotten a lot more comfortable. The cold front has passed. The dew points have dropped. Uh, we have dew points generally in the 40s almost everywhere uh, right now across the area. Northwest winds, temperatures dropping into the 50s, um, and things are going to get a lot more comfortable and a lot colder by the morning, uh, as you see looking at the temperatures across our area right now. Um, so we'll look at the uh, latest from the Hurricane Center regarding uh, what we've got going on in the tropics. And yes, we have a new tropical depression, 28. That will become Zeta. Uh, probably in a day or so or less. So uh, let's take a look at uh, Epsilon right now. Uh, we'll start with Epsilon. Uh, this is the map again. Uh, so you can see, look at this. They have this uh, They have this becoming a uh, tropical storm. They still have it as an extra tropical storm. And it looks like it's heading for Iceland. So uh, yeah, very unusual to see that. To see the Hurricane Center have a map this far north. Um, you know, this is Greenland over here. I mean, really unusual uh, to see. Uh, so, and it's still holding its own. Let's look at the latest public advisory on Epsilon. Large Hurricane Epsilon accelerating northeastward. High surf and rip currents possible along Atlantic beaches through the weekend. So as of 5 p.m., its location is 39.4 north, 58.2 west, about 615 miles northeast of Bermuda, and about 565 miles south-southwest of Cape Race, Newfoundland, Maximum stain winds are 80 miles an hour, and it's moving northeast at 22 miles an hour. So it's finally been picked up in the upper, uh, in the jet stream there. And uh, its uh, minimum central pressure is 958 millibars, or 28.29 inches. Uh, so uh, the hurricane storm force winds now extend outward up to 105 miles from the center. And tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 425 miles from the center. So this is a very large system. Uh, and that's what happens when they start becoming extra tropical or they they move further north actually grow in size and that's exactly what's happening here so let's take a look at the latest with epsilon we're going to look at the latest satellite imagery of it uh and this is the satellite imagery we have waiting for it to load here uh but there it is uh still uh definitely you could clearly see uh the the uh, form of this thing still a tropical system right now uh which and it's very unusual to see this far north uh, but again, that's all because of the warmer than normal water temperatures. Uh, not surprised. So let's uh, do this. We're going to switch it to this. So you get an idea of that transition. Uh, let's see if it's, yeah, you can see that transition from the visible to the short wave there. Uh, you can still see the convection blow ups going on around the center uh, there in that short visible. Let me pause that right there. You can still see the convection blow ups going on in the uh, center there. So still, this thing is still tropical. Um, it isn't extra tropical yet. Uh, which is, uh, again, very unusual to see this far north. Uh, not something that you're used to seeing, uh, that's for sure. Um, let's go and look at the MODIS satellite. We're going to look at this on the MODIS satellite, too. The high-resolution NASA satellite here. Take a look and see what it looks like as well on here. Uh, so there it is. You can clearly see it. Um, look at that. I mean, that is, uh, that is formidable right there. And look at how huge that thing is. I mean, you could fit almost the entire east coast in the whole system. That's how big it is. Uh, so a really huge system, uh, quite a monster. Um, and, of course, we were kind of stuck in the clouds, as you can see. This is this cold front that's kind of moving through, but it's going to stall to the south. It's not really going to make it very far south either. So that's not the only thing that we've got to deal with. Um, we've also got this Tropical Depression 21. Uh, I think that's what its name is, 20, 28, I'm sorry. So we have Tropical Depression 28. Uh, and so let's take a look at the latest on Tropical Depression 28. Uh, the latest public advisory uh, for this. Uh, tropical Depression moving slowly north northwestward. Heavy rainfall expected across portions of the northwestern Caribbean and southern Florida during the next few days. So as of 8 p.m., it's about 200, it's located 18.9 north, 83.1 west, about 240 miles south-southeast of the western tip of Cuba, and about 270 miles east-southeast of Cozumel, Mexico. Maximum stain winds are 30 miles an hour, and it's moving 
northwest at just two miles an hour. Minimum central pressure 10,005 millibars and uh, 1,005 millibars and 29.68 inches. Uh, and uh, this thing is going to strengthen probably into a tropical storm. Uh, we're going to look at the latest chart on this, and this is going to what is going to become Zeta. They actually have this becoming a hurricane. Uh, so this could become a hurricane. Uh, um, and again, this is like a track that so many systems have taken uh, this year. Uh, and same area, you've got tropical storm watches in effect for the western part of Cuba. Uh, so <laughs> another system to watch. Uh, and again, this is Zeta. So after this system, uh, we are in new uncharted territory because we've never gone past Zeta in history. Uh, and I think we will get past Zeta this year, and maybe even this month, because uh, the month isn't over yet. We still got uh, a week left of uh, tw of October. Um, it, so uh, let's go back to the satellite loop here, and we're going to look at 28. Oh yeah, look at that. Here we go. Wait for it to load here. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, this is going to be a tropical storm, I think, by the morning. Look at those blowups. Yeah, this is going to be a tropical storm probably by morning. Uh, this is going to be, and again, this is what uh, this is going to be called tropical storm Zeta. So last in the first set of the Greek names, we've gone through all the whole entire set of Greek names, the first set of them. Uh, so yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, so uh, and let's uh, let's let's also look at the models too. Uh, all right, these are the models with epsilon. Uh, and again, you can see it kind of hitting Iceland here. This is, uh, again, some of the tribes. Some of them are going to, this could hit the United Kingdom. I think it will. Uh, this is the intensity guidance, slowly weakening it. Um, but we want to look at 28. So again, why hasn't this, there's like a bug in this. I hit 20, if I, I got to refresh the page to get the, so this is 28. This is, uh, what, uh, 28L. Uh, and there is this bit of a, a spread into where this is going to go. Uh, where it could wind up impacting Gulf Coast again. Got to be on the lookout again. Uh, we might even see the remnants make it up here. Um, so, yeah, I know. It just never ends with these tropical systems. So, uh, let's go look at the models now. Um, and we will start with the upper air pattern on the GFS. And this is the 18Z GFS. So there is Epsilon, uh, and uh, you will see Epsilon move out, move out, continue moving away. Luckily, it's not impacting any land. It was such a monster. Luckily, it never impacted. The first land it may impact may be in Europe, yeah. Iceland, or maybe in the United Kingdom in some form. Uh, but you can still see that ridge sitting over the Atlantic. It's changed. It's moved a little bit, but we still got the stall front syndrome uh, that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, and the GFS is very slow to remove this ridge uh, from the east. Uh, it has. We would have to wait until this uh, trough comes through on Friday. Finally, bring a very strong call front and a major cool down for the last weekend of October, um, and uh, and then and then then we might see more of a change. Uh, now you'll notice here's another system forming in the tropics. This is another one. So that would be Ada, I believe. That would be Ada. That one right there. So, yeah, I know, it's crazy. Uh, as far as Zeta goes, you don't really even see it show up on here too, too too much on the upper air. You don't see it show up at all on the upper air, actually, on this on this GFS model. Uh, let's take, go take a look at the European model on the upper air. So, uh, and again, you still see the same type of thing with this ridge here. And the same type of idea... They're going to have to suffer with the ridge. It's a little flatter. Uh, and uh, the Euro is a lot flatter, actually. It doesn't really have it doesn't really have a trough at all developing. Uh, so the Euro is, like, completely different, uh, which is kind of interesting. So let's go and look at the surface map. For the GFS. So, uh, and actually, uh, we can't look at Epsilon. There goes Epsilon. Look at that. Right toward Iceland, it looks like. So, we'll have to see what happens with that. But uh, let me go to the Conus view. Go back to the Conus view on this. 
So you can sort of see uh, that's, that would be Zeta down there, by the way. Um, so uh, for us, you can see what happens. To, we have this high that tries to build in tomorrow. Hopefully keeps us dry most of the day. But then the rain comes in by the evening. Um, uh, and then you have, you have Zeta right here. So this is Zeta. Doesn't look like it has it getting too strong. Um, but you can see what we got, we're got. we going to be dealing with here is more stall front syndrome again uh, into this week. We're going to be dealing with it. And we're going to be dealing right through the whole week according to the GFS. And then we would get the remnants of Zeta bringing us uh, heavy rain on Thursday and Friday. So more rain uh, for Thursday and Friday. This is going to be go down as one of the wettest, dreariest Octobers in, in recorded history, I think, uh, with all these stall fronts. And this is, again, the GFS's idea of what's going to happen here. It doesn't necessarily mean it's right, uh, but this is the GFS's uh, idea of what's going to happen uh, with uh, the uh, weather in our area. And it just, this, this ridge just doesn't want to give way. And, and uh, if we go ahead and we look at the, the jet stream, um, this is the problem here. It's the jet stream upper. You'll see what the problem is, that the jet stream just doesn't want to come down in the east. Is a of really, this is very messed up, the way this jet stream looks. There's a very narrow trough. This is one thing we're seeing a lot of, these narrow little troughs that form. And again, it's not normal. You're supposed to have a broader trough, but this is all part of the waviness uh, due to Arctic amplification. And you can see just the mess that this jet stream is in. Um, and we'd have to wait for that tr uh, trough to finally come through Friday night and Saturday and finally bring us relief. So, yeah, uh, according to the GFS, we're going to be suffering for a while here. Um, uh, I don't know if the Euro offers the same product. Let me see if it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I didn't think it did. Okay, so um, let's go back to the this view here. And I want to look at the NAM 12 kilometer because uh, we want to see if, if we can see uh, what happens with Zeta on the NAM. So this is the NAM. And again, if you look at our area, you can see that rain getting close to us uh, later tomorrow afternoon already. Uh, and I think we had some rain this morning, too, because everything was wet. This is uh, Zeta right down here. Um, but the, G the NAM's a little different. It, it, it wants to have a stronger high build-in and suppress this more to the south, uh, which would bring us more sunshine. So I'm hoping the NAM would be correct on this. And this is the 18Z NAM. So you can see there's a real divergence in the models um, with what happens. So let me go into the northeast here. So you could see here uh, that we stay dry according to the NAM, and then the, the rain starts coming. It could have, could be affecting New Jersey in the afternoon, and then for us, uh, we maybe have rain just to the south of us uh, until the evening, and uh, and then for Monday it doesn't look like it's generating too much rain. Um, if we go right through Wednesday morning and see how much rain this is generating total accumulated precip, you would see that the NAM doesn't really seem to have a whole lot of rain over us. It has more of it to the south, but if I flip to the GFS, uh, it looks a little different, uh, a little more rain in our area. Um, so, um, the GFS, with this rain here, uh, that moves in tomorrow, you see it almost develops like a little wave offshore there. So it has a little more of that rain making it into the area tomorrow night across Long Island. Um, and uh, we'll have to see what happens, and then maybe some of it lingering into uh, Monday. And then every day is a chance of rain on this GFS, Tuesday. And then we really get soaked Tuesday. Uh, this could be a real soaker of a storm. And I'm curious to see how much the GFS has as far as rainfall goes. Total accumulated precip. Let's take a look and see. Oh, look at that. We're in the purple. So we could see another three to four inches of rain if the GFS is correct. And that, I think, would put us in the book for the wettest October on record. Um, so... Uh, if if this were to verify, of course, that's the GFS's idea. Uh, it is, these are models, so they're not necessarily... So it's just a, a guess of what's going to happen. Uh, that the GFS wants to bring the moisture from Zeta, uh, Zeta up here. I wish it would stay south where it belong, belongs. We've had it enough with the moisture and the humidity and the rain here. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see what happens, you know. Um, so uh, let me look at the HRRR as well. It's another model we can look at as well. Uh, zero Z, I don't really have a whole lot of that one in. We'll have to use the 18 Z. As far as the progression of the rain tomorrow. So you can see, this is the HRRR, and has it just to our south. 
and then brings us over the area Monday too. It's raining by two o'clock if the H triple R is correct, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I've had it with this damn rain already. Um, so we have to see how much rain the, 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 this would uh, give us here. Uh, yeah, it could give us uh, a half an inch of rain perhaps uh, tomorrow uh, in the afternoon. Uh, probably wouldn't be heavy rain, but uh, it would be miserable uh, because not only could it be raining, it's going to be chilly too. Um, it's going to be a chilly rain if uh, this is all correct. So uh, we're going to go look at the temperatures at least. It's not, well, it's not like it ever got that hot in the first place. It's just the humidity uh, that came in. So, uh, you can see here's this cold front coming through by morning. GFS has us around 40 degrees. Uh, and then we only get up into the mid, low to mid-50s if we're lucky tomorrow. Uh, again, with those clouds coming in and perhaps rain by the evening. Um, that's going to uh, keep the temperatures way down. And then for, for Monday, you can see there's that stall front. And you can see some of that warm air trying to make it back into the area again. Uh, this would be uh, Monday again. You can see we're just playing with the stall front. And then it goes back to the south on Tuesday. Uh, and we're in the cool air. Uh, but we're dealing with clouds and shower chances. Here we are Wednesday, still dealing with the stall front. Here's Thursday. We could be 70s. Here's the stall front sitting right on top of us. And then the front finally tries to make it through on Friday with a wave of low pressure. And if this were to verify, there could be some snow upstate uh, with such cold temperatures and precipitation falling. And then very cold for the weekend. Saturday, temperatures only eh, struggling to reach the 50-degree mark. Of course, that would be Halloween. And then uh, Sunday, your first day of November, getting back up into the mid-50s. That's the GFS, of course. Um, uh, and again, every model is going to be different with that because if we, looked at the, if we look at the NAM model, um, if we look at the NAM model, uh, you can see, I like the NAM because it's really higher resolution. You can see there's that front coming through. There's the temperatures dropping. And tomorrow, uh, it has us um, much cooler. So tomorrow, and the NAM obviously has a cool bias. It only has us struggling to reach 50. Uh, and then for Monday, it you can see it brings that warm air in. You can clearly see that warm air where literally to, just to our north, they may be struggling to reach 50, and we may be in the 60s. And there's also going to be humidity with that, too. Uh, and that humidity is going to get back into the picture, too. Again, like I said, I wish this crap would stay down south where it belongs. It doesn't belong up here. Um, but, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is the cl Long Island's climate is now more like the climate of North Carolina. Um, so you can see tomorrow we have the nice dry air. You can see some pretty strong northeasterly breezes. Uh, but then you can see that wave of low pressure. And then here comes that humidity coming back up at us on, um, on Monday again. And then, uh, shifting to the south again on Tuesday. Uh, so, yeah, if you think you don't need to put your air conditioner on, well, you're going to need to put it on probably again on Monday. Uh, and then the uh, humidity will drop. But you can see the NAM wants to uh, keep that, puts that front much further to the south of the GFS. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead back to the GFS and we'll uh, look at the clouds. Because there's going to be two different scenarios, obviously, with the clouds, you know, with the different setups that these models have. Uh, so GFS, I mean, we don't see the sun tomorrow. We're socked in all day with the clouds. And then Monday we're socked in, Tuesday we're socked in, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have to wait until Saturday before we finally get out of this. Uh, the last day, uh, Halloween, the last day of October, uh, according to the GFS, we'd have to wait that long uh, before we can finally get out of this and see some clear sky again. And who knows, if you want to look at any foliage, who knows if there's going to even be any left at that time, um, at least along the lakes. Um, so... Uh, Let's go to the NAM, because the NAM has a different idea of things. Well, I'm hoping it does. So here's here's the NAM tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna have plenty of clouds around. Right? Maybe a glimpse of sun in the afternoon. I think tomorrow you're not really gonna see all that much sunshine. Uh, and uh, then here's Monday the NAM, and then it's as far as I get on uh, uh, Tuesday here. That's as far as the NAM goes, uh, as far as that uh, as far as that goes. So I can't say say what the sky is gonna be. On those, you can look at the RGEM model as well, which is another sky model, and see if that uh, brings us any uh, clearing. Uh, this is Tuesday, so you can see there, yes. So it tries to get that front through, and Wednesday we might have some sunshine. All depends of getting this front through. The RGEM and the NAM seems to want to bring it through. The GFS does not, uh, so we'd have to see uh, what's going to happen with that. Obviously, you have a definite, definite difference of opinion. 
uh, on the models here. That's for sure. Um, so uh, let me go to windy.com. We'll use the other site, windy.com, and we'll. I want to look at some of the other models in regards to uh, Epsilon and some of the other things uh, that we have. So this is, again is Epsilon here out there in the middle of the ocean and it's quite a monster and uh, I'll just want to show you uh, where it's gonna go on this so we just move it along here um, see and it's still you can see it's just it's, it's just holding its own look at this this is uh, the, and it gets even bigger it keeps expanding this is Monday at 4 p.m. Uh, and you can see it looks like it's heading for Iceland maybe Greenland is getting affected by it um, and we still have gusts in some of the parts of the storm, 100 miles an hour. Uh, and then we move it along to Tuesday. And it's still there. So it's not even moving that fast. kind of gets caught up and kind of gets stuck. But this could be bad for the United Kingdom, Iceland, Greenland. They're going to have to watch out for some stormy conditions there. I'm not saying they're going to be hurricane conditions. But they're certainly going to have to watch out for some stormy conditions. So let's uh, get back into our neck of the woods here uh, and take a look at what this is going to do with Zeta here. Uh, because this is Zeta right here. Uh, so if we go by tomorrow, 3 o'clock, uh, you can definitely see this thing is going to be a tropical storm, I think, by then. Uh, moving along to Monday, here it is, picking up more strength. Here we are at Tuesday. And notice there's much slower movement. And the GFS seems to want to make this thing move much faster. Uh, and uh, I don't know if that's going to really wind up moving that fast. Here's Wednesday. Uh, and uh, this thing has it, uh, the right side of the storm. Could be a Category 1 hurricane, perhaps. Um, and then it, and then, it, well, yeah, then it moves it toward us. I guess it would be Thursday. Um, so, uh, and then it, we, we'd wind up seeing the remnants of it hitting our area um, Friday. Uh, so, uh, we're going to look at our area now and uh, look at this and see. And hopefully, maybe we can get... Um, maybe some clearer skies. We're going to look at this. And again, this is the European model here uh, that we have, uh, that we are looking at. So here's 10 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we're going to see much in the way of send tomorrow. Here come the clouds uh, and the chance for showers. Again, I think it's going to be mainly to the south, but there could be showers over us. This is Monday, dealing with the same thing. Tuesday, dealing with the same thing. What about Wednesday? Wednesday, we may have some breaks. So Wednesday may turn out to be an alright day. Here's Wednesday in the afternoon, but then the clouds roll back in, and then we're dealing with the next rain. And this would be a Thursday uh, that we'd see this rain from uh, Zeta uh, affect our area. But of course, Zeta hasn't even formed yet, and this is uh, the front trying to get offshore on Friday. Uh, and look at that. It still doesn't make it offshore. Does it make it offshore by Saturday? Look at that. Uh, so this is, the, this is the European model. So they're all different, but it's a struggle to get some nice weather in our area. So that's, that's, that's the one thing you can take away from this weather update. Um, so that's going to be it for this weather update. I know it's gloomy and it sucks, and I hate it as much as you do. Um, but, uh, you know, if you really want some nice weather, uh, I would suggest you head up into northern New England. That's, that's the best place in the country right now for some nice weather, and they'll have plenty of sunshine tomorrow and chilly temperatures, and I'm sure the fall colors are very nice there. Uh, if you can go there, of course. And I don't have a car, so uh, if I did, I would definitely take the drive up there and get out of this horrible yuck that we're in. Uh, but I don't, so I'm kind of stuck here. That's going to wrap up this weather update. Take care.